I couldn't speak this good. I couldn't speak at all, let alone in front of the camera or in front of people. I failed the first attempt, the second, the third, the fourth. But the virus started knocking on the door and said, Hey, Radha, I don't think all of this is going to happen. You need to take a seat back. My phone started blowing up crazy, not knowing what's happening. And that's how we began. I cannot believe I am here doing this. It just is a spiral in my head knowing the fact that little Rudha has come such a long way and she's finally made it here. Hello everybody, my name is Rudha Tarana. I am a content creator, a model as well as an MC. I come from Kurk and now I'm here in Bangalore for six years now. I think if you would like to know the journey and the story, it is a lot of ups and downs, but I think the best part is being able to share it with people with a big bright smile knowing that I've made it. As I told you, I come from a very small village and um, growing up, it was definitely a place of joy. It's a beautiful place with a lot of things around. We, we got the opportunity to go to a convent school, got the best education in that time, as well as why we kept growing, having fun as we were three girls never did gender come into picture. That's not something we ever spoke of. But eventually, I remember my mom slowly sliding in comments as, you're a girl, you can't do this. You're a girl, you might want to just slow down. And you're a girl, you should think of getting married and learning skills that will help you. But I was made for big things, you know. But what if I want to, I'm a girl, but I want to do something different. I'm a girl, I want to, I just don't want to marry and have kids, but do something better. And that's when I think my mind just started changing. Having everybody around us talking about, okay, you're three girls, you need to think of a way to get them married and dowry. Like imagine a little girl hearing about dowry on a regular basis. I was just like, no, that's not what we're going to do. We need to find a path and build a way that I know for a fact, the older version of me would be happy. I started, uh, I told my parents that I want to do my college. I took science and when I started doing that, I just had a whole plan in my head that I need to choose a course that is not here as with which I can convince them that I need to step out of Kurg. And the whole idea seemed really unreal because I didn't know how my mind worked at that time. I said, I want to do biotech and genetics. I did my research. The only time I might have used Google for the right reasons, went in and I found a college here in Bangalore, which offered me biotechnology and genetics in the same room. Finally, having my parents convinced was the biggest task because they wanted their daughter to be married by the age of 18 and have kids because that's what everybody else around did too. Sat my parents down and I said, I need to do this for myself. Didn't happen. They said, no, we cannot help you because we're financially unstable at this point of time. And as I said, girls don't do this. You will eventually have to get married. You've gotten enough education to teach your kids and that's all you need. No, I didn't. I told them that I'll take a loan. I'll go on and I'll make sure that I'm not a burden to you on in any way at all. And that's what I did. I took a loan for three lakhs. I went to Bangalore. I got into the scholars that I wanted to, and I started studying. But in the meantime, as my dad said, the financial stability was not that great. I had to look for something which would help me financially. And that's how I got into emceeing. So I got into events. I used to earn 800 a day, which was on Saturdays and Sundays. And then slowly I would see the MC and, and the host doing an amazing job with a microphone in their hand, all right? But I couldn't speak this good. I couldn't speak at all, let alone in front of the camera or in front of people. I was shaking, I was nervous, but the money that they got was quite good and I needed that. So what I did was, I'm gonna give it a shot no matter what. I got into the events. I was paid thousand a day, which was 2000 for Saturday and Sunday, and I was happy. I got in and I said, you know what? I'm gonna do this no matter what. I failed the first attempt, the second, the third, the fourth, but I didn't give up. I said, I have to keep doing this. I need to keep, I need to keep getting better at this. And eventually on my ninth event, I personally felt that I did a really amazing job. And that's how we began. Once the event industry well was good to go, I was also modeling and taking up gigs here and there whenever I got the time. But uh, as I said, not everything happens in your favor, right? The industry started to recognize you. They would reach out to you saying, hey, we need you to host an event. And uh, but the virus started knocking on the door and said, Hey, Radha, I don't think all of this is going to happen. You need to take a seat back. So pandemic happened. The events only run when you have the crowd. But when you don't have a crowd, you need to sit back. And that's when I got into corporates. Guys, 
I have to give down to everybody who does a nine to five job because that's not my cup of tea. I don't know how it happens. And the whole capability that I had, the talents and the skills I had, I felt like it was taken away from me. I had this whole routine put up on me and people asking me what to do and what not to do. And I realized I'm going to be here for as long as I can, but eventually I need to move out. In this whole process, in this whole journey, I explored myself. I learned a lot of things. I was confident. I learned self-love, but eventually I just started giving myself and prioritizing myself more than I would do for anything. I realized that it's so important to see the world for myself before I see the world for the rest of them. I, I learned that if I love myself is the only way I could be able to love the next person. And this is where it changed. I said, I'm going to work here, learn as much as I can, but I'm getting out of this because corporate motivation is not my cup of tea. Followed by six months into corporate, I learned. I remember dropping my papers. I said, this is all I can do. My Instagram following at that time was 3000. This was in the year 2020, November. I don't know what was happening. I started making content as an IGTV. Um, I started making content on IGTV during the pandemic where I stuck up on mental health, stuck up on self-love, stuck up on topics where women were usually the, the people who had to go through a lot of things. And eventually I got into reels because they were shorter and I had a lot of opinions, you know, I'm the woman with opinions. So I started sharing my opinions on the skin color, the way I look, um, what would I want to do? And a lot of other women who are going through similar problems, but do not have a voice. And I wanted to become their voice, but not in my wildest dream did I think that I'd be here with 625k followers and having a massive, how do I say, audience that really, really love me and want, to, want me to do better in life. And that's how on November 15th, my phone started blowing up crazy, not knowing what's happening. And when I open, I realized there are crazy notifications and people following me left and right. And trust me, I did not drop my papers because of that. I had already dropped my papers before this. Followed by stepping out, I was still confused. I was slowly picking up, picking up events virtually but I knew that I need to get onto it. I need to do something better. I slowly started sharing more videos, more content. I started speaking up for what I believed in, what my experiences are, experiences of, experiences of women around me. And it worked. It felt like there were a lot of women, there were a lot of other people who wanted a sense of voice, somebody talking for them, somebody acknowledging their pain as well as knowing that it's not easy. As I keep telling, a lot of women are still struggling to just get their education, to be able to say no and choose their partners and who they want to settle and marry. Not a lot of women are taught about financial independence or financial literacy, where they know how the money comes, where they can invest or where they can go. Most of them are dependent on their parents, followed by their husbands. And that's what I wanted to change. I wanted everyone to be independent. I wanted them to make decisions for themselves. I wanted them to stand up and feel confident in their skin, their body, the way they are, the way they speak and everything. And I think I'm doing a good job. First time in six years, my parents visited me here in Bangalore. And uh, I had the whole itinerary planned as, as to what I want to do for them and where I want to take them. And eventually, I remember my father sitting right there and he said, I'm really proud of you. I'm proud of what you've turned out to be and, and how exceptional you're doing. And I think that's all I wanted because throughout the journey, I, I heard, I wish you were a boy. I wish um, I had you as a boy. But now they're like, that's my girl and she's doing fabulous. Eventually, um, even now, one of the things that I constantly keep telling people is it's not an easy job. It's not an easy job for you to accept yourself, for you to get out of things, which is a hurdle, which is built by the society, by people around you saying, this is what you need to do and this is how you have to be. Breaking those bar barriers is hard. But if you do not take that first step, if you do not knock on that and understand, oh, this is just a cardboard and I just need to crash it down, you will never make it. And don't give up on yourself. It's just the first step. You fall, you get up, you pat yourself and say, you know what? I've learned something from this, but I'm gonna keep getting better and better and better. Go for your dreams, never and ever stop. It might work for you, it might not work for you, but eventually you'll never regret that you did not give this a shot. At the end, all I could say is, love yourself a little more. Don't wait for someone else to do it for you. Don't wait for somebody to come and walk in and say, you know what, I'm gonna give you everything. Give yourself everything that you ever wanted and then you'll be able to give more to other people around you. Because when you treat yourself with love and kindness, you treat everybody else with love and kindness tenfold because you know how it works. With this, I think we've come to an end. Sayonara. This is me, Ilda Tarana, signing off. Thank you.
इट इज सेट दैट वेन यू एजुकेट अ वुमेन यू एजुकेट एन इंटायर जनरेशन नारी सशक्तिकरण पर यह पंक्तियां हमारे दिल को जोश और हिम्मत से भर देती है ऐसी ही हिम्मत भरी कहानी अभी हमने सुनी जोश टॉक्स पर और हमें उससे काफी प्रेरणा भी मिली ऐसी ही कहानी है लक्ष्मी जी की जिन्होंने सी एस करके बड़े शहर में वो आए जॉब का सपना लेके पर उन्हें यहाँ जॉब नहीं मिल पाई पर उन्होंने हिम्मत नहीं हारी जोश के साथ उन्होंने कम्युनिकेशन स्किल्स पर काम किया और आज एक बड़ी कंपनी में वो काम कर रही हैं लक्ष्मी जी की ही तरह कई स्टूडेंट्स जैसे कि वैशाली जी नीला प्रणाली आरती और उषा जी ने मिल के जोश स्किल्स के साथ विभिन्न स्किल्स जैसे कि स्पोकन इंग्लिश कम्युनिकेशन स्किल्स पर्सनैलिटी डेवलपमेंट फाइनेंस बिजनेस बिल्डिंग सीख आज अपनी अलग पहचान बनाई है आज ही अपने जैसे लाखों स्टूडेंट के साथ भारत के नंबर वन स्पोकन इंग्लिश लर्निंग ऐप जोश स्किल्स ऐप के साथ अपनी इंग्लिश लर्निंग जर्नी शुरू करें Josh Talks is now a Spotify exclusive podcast. The audio version of our talks will be available only on Spotify. If you like this video and you like to listen to more inspiring stories like this, please follow the Josh Talks podcast only on Spotify.